Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors, combat and wilderness grade custom knife and sheath systems. We've got the badass gear for the badass outdoorsman. Yellowhawk. Morning. <laughs> Here's what we got. Here's what we're working with. This is this is the shelter. Uh, the actual tarp section of the Hubba Hubba tent from MSR Mountain Safety Research. And I sleep in this a lot because it's roomy and it's extremely weatherproof and you can see the sleeping bag I use it like a quilt look there's there's Kiva 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 there she is oh my baby there she is all right sit 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 Kiva sit Good girl, good girl. And say hi to everybody. Oh, she got goopy eyes. Goopy eyes. You still tired, huh? You still tired? She's hungry. So, I think I'm gonna whip up a little bit of breakfast, and that'll be it. Start my day. How you doing guys and gals? This is Doug Wilson from Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. We're on the third annual Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors Fall Rendezvous. And it is cold, cold. It's cold. I'm cold. So, uh, <laughs> I thought part of our stay here I could do, uh, a little talk about the tulip poplar tree um, and show you how to easily identify it in the winter okay um, now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you like the bark I'm gonna show you what the leaves look. here's here's how I do it when I want to find a tulip poplar or downed pieces or dead standing pieces of poplar I look for poplar leaves, right? And this is what a poplar leaf looks like right here. Now these are old, okay? Because as, as the Grizz instructed me, uh, these softwood trees, the tulip poplar, drop their leaves first. They're one of the first to drop their leaves. So by, by now, they're going to be nice and, you know, chewed up. All softwood. All dry, you know? So here's one that I found. It was difficult to find these because uh, they're covered with the oak leaves that are around. Here's another one. Tulip poplar. Now just imagine this green and full, right? <laughs> another one. Just showing you different examples of it. Here's another one. Okay. And then here's a smaller one. This... Uh, this actually has tips on the side, but they broke off. All right. And here's a, an even smaller one. Uh, and the tips are broken off of that one, too. So, okay. So now, now that I've found my leaves, right, my poplar leaves, I know there's probably going to be some, a poplar around there somewhere. Probably quite a few of them. So the next thing I look for is... I want to build a bow drill set, right? So I'm looking for dead standing poplar. You don't want it on the ground. Uh, you want it either hanging in the tree or as it falls, it hits the ground, it leans against the tree, or it lands in another tree or bush and you can reach it. That's what you're looking for. You want it nice and dry. Kiva, go. You want it nice and dry, okay? So I want to show you a piece of poplar that might be suitable for a bow drill set, okay? 
And I say might be because you won't know it's suitable until you try to get that coal from that wood. Okay? But we're, we're pretty close with this one, I think. So I'm going to show it to you. So I'll show you how to ID the bark. And it's really, I tell you, I call this the lifesaver tree. Okay? This is, this is a piece of poplar right here. And the way I identify it is I look for this. I actually look for these striations right here. See the striations? I look for that first. And just about every piece is going to, you're going to see that, right? Because this outer bark flakes off. And this is um, at a state of decomposition I think is going to work for us, right? Uh, but there, there's other issues to, uh, to worry about as well. So this is tulip poplar bark, right? See how it kind of like peels off the tree? And this is coming off in big sheets. Doesn't always do that. And you see all the fraying, okay? It's pretty easy to identify that in the woods, okay? Because there isn't any other tree that does it just like that, okay? So, so I want to cut a piece. Now, unfortunately, the stuff that we found was not dead standing. It was on the ground. <laughs> so what I would do is, I'm not going to build a bow drill set now. I, I built one yesterday. So I'm going to show you what we did and show you what the pieces look like and how to chop it out and all that stuff. Okay. So here's another piece. This, this bark here is just waiting to be processed. It'll peel right off. No problem. You can see... I mean, this is going to call, come off in sheets, all right? So you can see it's coming off here, and I'll get... You can also make cordage. If it is not too desecrated or, you know, if it's not too old, those fibers are pretty strong, and you can make cordage out of this stuff as long as the bark that you get is not too old. If you can pull on it a foot piece, you know, a 12-inch piece, Pull on it on either side, you'll be able to tell whether you can use it or not. If it breaks easy, then you're not going to be able to use it for cordage. Okay? Uh, you, you'll have weak cordage. So I'm going to show you uh, a couple other things here. Uh, let me cut a piece of this. I want to show you what it's going to take. Now this is damp, I can feel it, but I can still show you what you need. Courtesy of the Silky Gone Boy, right? <laughs> hey, if I can find an easier way of doing something, I'm going to do it. Okay. So we're looking at this, this wood right here, okay? And it's pretty white. This wood's pretty white, okay? As opposed to this piece here, which has a big chunk of yellow right in the middle of it. There's a bunch of yellow right in the middle of it. I can see it, okay? Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I can. You want to stay away from that yellow heartwood. I call it the yellow heartwood. You want to stay away from that because it's too hard in most cases to get a to get a coal from so what I do is I look for uh, a piece I just cut it I cut the the limb or the tree this was a this was a tree I pulled it out of the ground so it wasn't very big young <coughs> and it's nice and white on the inside I can see the white now I can see a hint of yellow but I think it's gonna be okay for a, a bow drill set and it may not be I would have to build it and then see what I got right so here's a bow drill here's a uh, a board that we made yesterday okay now this is mostly white on the sides you know there's a little bit of yellow in the center center but it's mostly white okay now this wood has been laying on the ground for, I don't know, two, three, four years, right? You don't want 
new wood and you don't want really old punky wood you want something in between to build a bow drill set out of because if it's too punky you won't get a coal if it's too hard you won't get a coal okay not all pieces of poplar will give you what you want and you're looking for that coal right so this is a good one so if you go around your area and you click poplar from all over the place you start cutting it and you look for the white uh, flesh right the white wood on that cross section right there the white wood if it's mostly white you got a good shot at it okay because that that wood is soft but not too soft okay here's another one now we failed to get to get uh, a coal out of these okay and I'll tell you when the wood is right I have no problem getting a coal all right if I gotta work really, really, really hard at it, I usually poop out by the time I get a coal, right? So I need good wood. Okay, here's another piece that's nice and white on the inside. Okay, and I usually take the spindle from the same tree. So if I build a bow drill set out of this tree right here, I'm gonna take the spindle from this tree. Hopefully this piece of wood as well, okay? So there you have it. Um, just wanted to show you how to ID the tool at Poplar. And I'm talking about realistically, right? You can go up to a tool at Poplar tree and identify it by its bark. But I'm telling you right now, a lot of trees look the same. It's difficult to, to uh, ID by, by their bark. You know, I, I know some botanists who can't do it, right? So you got to use other methods that are easier to ID the tree with, and that's the leaves. And when you see the wood with those striations, you know, here's another one. Cracked up piece right there. Okay, that's a piece of poplar. Uh, if you're not sure, then try to peel the bark off of the, of the piece that you found. And if it does that, if it turns into one of these strips, if I get a piece here. Now this is a really long strip that I pulled from from one from one tree, okay? And I won't know if it's viable until I work with it, okay? If it falls apart real easy, you don't want it. Keep hunting. There you go. I'm pretty sure this is going to work though. These are pretty strong fibers. They're not too strong. I wouldn't make cordage out of this. It's not it's just too old. But uh It'll make a great bird's nest. So, Chris, hand me the uh, the uh, the bow drill sets that are behind that right. trash bag right there. They're right in the corner, but not in the corner. Right? I need the two piles of tinder. <laughs> the two piles of processed bark. You don't see them? Yeah, there's two piles sitting there. Same process bark. It's one step beyond bow drill set. Right. There you go. There's the two piles. And I processed these yesterday. And this is what it looks like when you process it down. Okay? Thank you. Very much. Okay? This is just a little processed, right? And you just you keep working with it. You keep working with it, right? You pull it apart, right? Keep working with it. Keep working until it looks like this. Okay? Like really coarse looking woody cotton. Okay? And that's going to be your bird's nest. Right? So now you've gotten the wood, which is the the uh, the base. You know, the, the uh, what do they call this, Chris? The base? Board. That, they call it something else. Hearth, hearth board. <laughs> this is the hearth board. We were sitting around the hearth. And then you get that from the wood, right? This is why I say uh, poplar is a lifesaver, right? And then from another piece, hopefully from the same branch or whatever, you'll make your spindle, which is the thing that spins, right? And then any old piece of bowed wood will work for the bow, okay? 
doesn't have to be poplar. Um, some people like dead wood. Some people like, um, you know, stuff that they cut off a live tree. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. As long as it's got a, like a natural bow in it, that's what works best for me. Okay. So we've gotten the wood from it for the bow drill set. We've gotten the tinder from it. Right? And I'm going to show you how to... See, this is really pretty... Not... Fairly easy to break, right? But you just want to crunch it up, okay? Crunch it up. Get it going. Some people take the bark off first, the outer bark. If it's soft, if it's not too thick, I leave it there, right? Then I do this number, right? Then I start pulling on it and rubbing it against itself. This is the, the best action I've seen yet, right? This one right here. Just go back and forth with it like you're washy closy, washy closy, okay? And you'll see it starts to break down into a, into a bundle, okay? Um, so that's it. That was like uh, how I find a tulip poplar in winter conditions. See ya. We're coming into the, uh, the part of the forest where there's a lot of white pine. And we're getting ready to build a fire for the night. And we're coming in here to collect the dead branches from the bottom half of the white pines around here. You can see the branches are, you know, the white pine branches, they're pretty much dead, right? And they make great tinder for starting a fire, right? Here's a bunch of them I just picked, you know, popped off. So, and now it's snowing. On the last day of the Yellow Hawk Customs annual fall rendezvous. And you know, there's only two guys left, right? The two diehards, myself, Chris Pagans. Ha <laughs> ha! And it's supposed to snow, I don't know, an inch or so. We'll see. You can see how rocky the trail is. I mean, there's rocks on rocks on rocks here. Uh, that's what makes the Appalachian Trail so difficult in a lot of areas is you got to watch out for these rocks. I've twisted my ankle and my knee numerous times in Rocksylvania. That's what through hikers call Pennsylvania. Rocksylvania. So, there's just so many rocks. Yeah, coming up to a stream here. I'm trying to keep the camera steady. That's nice. I always like to see somebody at our campsite when we come back. <laughs> somebody we don't know. Nobody's watching the camp right now. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. You out for a while? Yeah, probably got about 13 more miles to go. Good. I love to see people out here. <laughs> In this kind of weather, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Home sweet camp. Here we are. We're getting ready to build our fire lay. Woohoo! We got all kinds of pine bundle now. And this is what's going to start the fire. 
pine burns real hot real fast real easy so you start your fire with that and then you can put your hardwood on your bigger pieces and whatnot That's a pretty feather stick. What do you think? Nice, it looks good. Nice wispy curls. And this is the Delta Whiskey Infinity. She is a feather sticking beast. And I'm not real good at feather sticks. I think this would uh, fly with the best of them, huh? Find some more ridges here. There we go. There's one. All right. There it is. Pretty good. Pretty good. That was uh, poplar. That was poplar. Uh, Delta Whiskey Infinity. Yellow Hawk approved for feather sticks. Okay, so we need a fire. We're on the Appalachian Trail. And I just fashioned a bow drill set from a piece of poplar right here. See it there? Here's the bow. I have no idea whether I'm going to get a coal or not. We'll see. But I got to process some poplar bark first. I call this the lifesaver tree, right? Because if you got the wood, right consistency of wood and you got the, uh, the bark, then, you know, you're all set, man. You know, the bow can be made out of anything. But let me process this down and we'll get back to you. I'm just stripping the... Uh, poplar bark off um, of the uh, the outer bark you don't need that it just hinders things if you leave it in there so I'm trying to get it all off give myself the best chance I can get stay Kiva All right, this is what we got so far. Now, we found all of this wood and the bark in the snow. So, you guys know how that goes, and we don't have time to dry it out, so I'm gonna hope for the best, right? And I'm gonna be positive-minded about it. And here it is, right? I'm just gonna fluff it up as much as I can. And then this will be our bird's nest. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to pop this down into the center a little bit. There it is. Okay. All right. We're going for a coal We're on the Appalachian Trail. We need a fire. And where's our bundle at? Um, under my armpit. That's right. <laughs> Kiva. Kiva! Get over there. Go. Go. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, nothing. Nope. <clears throat> nothing. I'm gonna have to take a break now. <laughs> Been adjusting the whole time, right? Adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. And we'll see what we get this time. And it's it is possible that this set just isn't gonna produce a coal today. It's possible. Right? It happens all the time. It's entirely possible. Okay, that's it, I'm done. I want a fire, so. I got one more fire technique I want to show you guys, so. Okay guys, so, took me four tries on the bow drill with the same set, and I was unable to get a coal from that, and I tried. It's just sometimes the wood is not cooperative, right? It's either too hard or too soft or whatever. You gotta get it in that sweet spot and we just don't have it here so i got another uh way to start a fire that you guys are really gonna like right ready <laughs> it's called a lighter okay <laughs> and lighters work almost all the time if the fuel's in them right almost all the time so there it is you guys are going to like this because this this way of starting fire really works i mean it's you might as well just throw that bow drill out i'm telling you it produces a real flame all right 90 percent man 90 percent of building a fire is preparation and we got everything prepared now all prepared. There it goes. She's going up. Now all this is just small pine branches. That's how I usually start my fires. If I can find pine, that's how I do it. Okay? And then you just go up in size from there. All that smoke is because it's it's damp. The wood's damp. So I tell you, this, this way of starting fire, I'm going to tell everybody about this. And I know a place you can get them. Really cheap. <laughs> Alright, so guys, there's our fire. This is our last day. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so the trip is over, and we're hiking out. We can say goodbye to the 2017 Yellowhawk Customs Fall Rendezvous. We ended up spending how many nights? Nine, Nine nights Eight. in the bush, backpacking, having fun, eating a shitload of food. And there's Kiva Kiva, our mascot. Come here, Kiva. Come. 
Come, there she is. Happy dog, happy dog, happy dog. There she is. All right, come on, babe. Ooh, mama. It is cold as a witch's thumb out here. <laughs> The colder the better. If it ain't snowing, it ain't training. No, it's, it ain't raining, it ain't training. Anyway, Leo Hardesty, you would have loved this trip because it got down to what? 22, 20? Yeah. I bet you it was 18 last night. So. Very easy. <laughs>